Greetings, ladies and mandalgens, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from, from Outer from Space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one. Muscles, Machines, and Martial Arts. Oh my. Written by Hitado. As a preface, I study biokinetics and physiology in the collective university of Zelagonen. The differences in each species' body design and how it fills out the basics, universal principles of signals, thoughts, muscles, consumption, always interested me. Each race, while having the same needs, grew up in a very different planet. The interactions with the environment pressures differently. It was the first time I got to experience the awe of seeing a human for the first time. To be honest, they always interested me a great deal, not just with them being omnivores, willing to consume everything up to rocks and dirt, including living, raw flesh. But the fact that they came from a planet with so many pressures, high gravity, fierce competition, high environmental variation, often hostile elements. When you get something that can not only live in that, but develop in the capacity to a high abstract thought, and leash such a formidable planet to their world, it is a very impressive beast indeed. They were, at the time, pretty new to the fold, so to speak. They weren't very common to see. The human I met was called Thomas. He was an interesting person. Turns out that humans are built around a dense series of layered ratchet ladder filament muscles acting on a heavy endoskeleton, controlled by specialized cells that carry an extremely rapid charge polarity, and can make conformation changes in synapses where they join. Highly fast, highly powerful transmission, and highly versatile. When not in combat situations, they're remarkably more sensitive to stimuli than any other species I know. The entire thought process, unlike practically every other species, operates over top the combat responses. Where other species have to put themselves up to the task of fighting or running, humans naturally slip down into it. It's a stunning indicator of the brutality of the planet. They evolved so easily to strip of all thoughts but fight or flight from themselves in an instant. Not to mention how it practically changes everything the body does as well, physically and psychologically. The effect even boils over to the restful situations. They naturally flinch or turn to face noise out of nature. But even then, when undisturbed, I got the feeling, at least from Thomas, that he subconsciously assessed everything for danger and what he could or could not fight and kill. Probably not that he couldn't fight or kill, he was a pretty big specimen, even for a human. However, I would get the true display of human physiology later on, when the university was raided. Sardiacs, mechanized pirates, absolutely towering, fast and cruel, they found most sinister delight in the tormenting of students, for, although they were only three of them, they were practically invincible. Thomas, though, he didn't really care for them. I watched as he jumped from the first story of the central library, swinging a pole clean down onto one of them. I know now he tried to incapacitate it by hitting the shoulder, but the force crushed the section of the mech, not designed to take kinetic force like that, which crushed and maimed the occupant's right shoulder. They deserved it. The second bounded over, firing its concussive blaster. Thomas didn't care about that either. They got within striking distance, and the pirate threw a mechanical fist out. Thomas, in a blur of motion, slammed a leg out and brought up an armed rock. The kick slammed into the barrel chest of the pirate hard and picked the larger mechanical fighter off the ground for an instant. It left a notable dent in the material. But the lay had given the third pirate time to sneak up behind him and seized his arms in an immovable grip. Humans are strong, but a larger creature, driven by pistons and motors and steel, will be stronger. The second, now free from harm, took its time to rise it to its feet, before walking over to Thomas, and proceeded to lay mechanized blow after mechanized blow into him. I could see the strain on Thomas's face. His skin was red from high blood pressure, his muscles and tendons were raised and bulging wherever I could see them, and his face was twisted into a snarl. 
I found myself struggling to look upon and stay calm. I knew the rough math. Sure, he didn't have an exoskeleton to crack or a pressure fluid system to burst beyond that of his blood vessels and lymphatics, but those blows mechanically aided and powerful enough to tear me in half. They rained blow after blow after blow down on the smaller human for roughly thirty seconds before finally stumbling back. Exhausted, too much effort expended. The pain of all physical combat. I thought Thomas would be dead. His red human echo poured out from the cuts and rents in his body from the general orifices mixing with his sweat. A most curious form of heat diffusion, a minor wound antiseptic for the salt carried in it. I expected a bloody meat bag of broken bones, abused meat, and a sad stink of absolutely destroying a complex of beautiful creature. I did not expect Thomas to spit some blood out and then look up and grunt out. Are you done? I had to go back over the cameras to accurately piece together the next series of events. First, he rolled his wrists in. While doing that, he basically slammed back into the pirate holding him from behind, sending him off balance. While it seemingly distracted, he managed to pull his hands free from its grip. Spinning to his left, he lets his left arm shove the pirate back, while his right loops around the other arm. The fingers touch and suddenly he's putting the mechanized pirate around himself before slamming a face into the floor. I had to go over it in slow motion to follow. I'm amazed that Thomas was doing this almost instantly, out of instinct. Suddenly, he wraps a leg around the limb and sits on the back of the pirate. He's pulling the arm further and further back until the metal snaps. Things shatter and pop and the pirate starts crying out in pain. Thomas releases the now dislocated and torn joint and gets back to the last pirate. Nothing fancy, he just runs at the last one. It tries to run away, but he catches it in a grappling thrust called a tackle and they're slammed into the ground before crawling on it and sitting up, face red and twisted. And then he starts raining blows down on it. Part of my brain laughs at the strange creature that thinks but beat technology with its flesh. Another part of me goes to cry to stop Thomas from hurting his hands. Both go unneeded, as I notice that the steel is slowly buckling inwards. He's mixing elbows, palms, and other strikes in with punching now. The third and final pirate has gone from confidence to resistance to pleading and begging for his life. He couldn't breathe, and with how the suit had been beaten inwards. Treatment had been extensive. Thomas had numerous lacerations, five crack ribs, three broken facial bones, numerous hairline fractures in his fists and feet and elbows, majorly torn skin and internal bleeding. The pirates had been lucky to be alive. Two had nearly been crushed and one had been badly thrown about. Likely, none of them would have been able to breathe easily. I asked Thomas quite reasonably, how in the stars did he do that? It turns out it was something of a martial artist. Because, of course, a human has decided teachings on how to be even more violent and dangerous. I clarified, though, and I could deduce the combat aspect. I wanted to know how he could take a beating by a 2.5 meter mechanical beast for so long and not care. His answer, martial arts, again, specifically body hardening. Turns out, at some point, some human developed a way to deal with blows taken. Apparently... The rough principle of it was, clench and control every muscle in your body, keep focus, control breath, and deal with the pain. It made no sense to me. He could not deny the laws of physics. The laws of physics said that he took those blows. He made no effort to deny it either, but still stressed that there was a benefit to it. Even he, though, struggled to state what benefit the original form. My work in theory... Either muscles, when clenched, deal with the force better over the whole, or the simple readiness robs the blow of the psychological effectiveness. I don't know enough information to confirm either hypothesis. What I do know is that Thomas, at a popular request, is starting up a class where he teaches some martial arts he knows, and that I'll certainly be attending. It'll be run by him, but mostly taught by his pair mate, who, according to him, is a vastly superior martial artist. He won't stop talking about how attractive she is or about how he loves her so much and that she is so fun. I dread to meet her.
End of chapter. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting and that may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.